Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Personal PR Show. And today we are here with the one and only, our resident guest, Portia, the producer. Hello, Portia, the producer. How are you? Hey, Jessica. You know me. Every day is great that ends in Y. Thank you for always inviting me on here. I'm super grateful as always. Thank it's, you so much. You know, for despite all the, the chaos that's going on, you know, it, it's always an honor to be able to take time to really do this and help more people. So thank you again, as always, Jessica. Thank you so much again uh, also for making the time you make really time for us every single month at the end of each month it's Porsche time here on the personal PR show <laughs> yes and we always talk about so many different things with you and and it's amazing and we know also I'm going to introduce you just for a second just because maybe some people haven't seen the previous um, episodes but anyway you are known as Porsche the producer and especially you are a radio and a podcast producer and this this leads us to today's topic. But before you were a radio producer and a podcast producer, you actually were a TV producer. And this is what yes. we're going to talk about today, right? The title of today's conversation is how to entice a TV producer. So is there anything that we should know, we should mention before we get into that? Hey, make sure you got your notebooks and ready to take notes because I'm about to drop a whole bunch of gems. I always take notes with Portia <laughs> I never take notes. like very rarely do I take notes you know during the personal PR show but with Portia I always have some <laughs> otherwise I, I can't miss it I can't miss it. we have to make sure guys to please get everything ready to write we have to make sure that you don't miss anything because Portia delivers so much content in like 20 minutes she's able to drop the content and somebody would would drop in I don't know 12 hours it's crazy let's go Portia then are All we ready right. Ready like SpongeBob, bring it on like Donkey Kong. <laughs> All right. So first, <laughs> I told you, Jessica, my sarcasm just comes out naturally. It, you know, it has no curfew. It is just, you know, it has its own personality. So how to entice a TV producer or a producer, whether it's podcaster, radio, television, whichever medium you're trying to get on. Number one, of course, Jessica, you know, I have an acronym for everything. I call this the rap acronym. So number one, R, standing for research. You have to do your due diligence and research the show, the episodes. And what I mean by research, don't just look at the name and say, oh, my God, this name sounds really cool. I want to get on this show. Wrong answer. Let's be realistic. There is over a billion podcasts out there and not every single podcast needs you on it. I'm going to say that again. Not every single show or podcast needs you on it. You want to really make sure that you... Find shows that really are in alignment with your messaging, with your branding, with what you stand for. So when I say research the show, listen to a few episodes, get a feel for how their guests are engaging with the host, because maybe you might listen to an episode and you book a call with them and you don't like the vibe of the host. So again, you want to make sure that when you're researching, you get a feel of the host. You get a feel of how they engage with their guests, the kind of questions that they're going to ask, right? Because sometimes hosts can throw you a curveball question and you might not want to answer it, right? You might get stuck in the moment. So research the show, listen to a couple of episodes, and then think about what the guest is bringing to the table, right? And I'm, I have to preface this, Jessica, because even though I just launched Grew with Porsche season number two, when I get pitches, I still get pitches to this day. You are not the product. I have to say that again. You are not the product. Okay. Whether you're a speaker, author, coach, you are not the product. At the end of the day, media just wants a story. They want something that engages their audience, that gives them more ratings. So keep that in mind. So again, when you're researching a show, really think about what can I bring to this audience that somebody else can use, right? So actually, you know what, Jessica, this is perfect because I'll actually read a pitch that I received earlier this week. I'll kind of change up some of the names, okay? Interviews available with Jesse Johnson on April the 12th from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. How to pack the perfect weekender bag. 
expert, beauty expert, Jesse Jackson shares must have travel essentials to make your spring getaway the easiest one yet. Okay. So what do you get from that pitch, right? This person is a beauty expert in their arena. They're saying the dates that they're available to do the interview. They're also saying who they are, what they want to bring to the table and what they want people to get away or take away from the interview, right? And then it goes more into kind of their background, right? It says spring is in full swing, which means it's time to start packing for those sun-filled getaways. Then it also has suggested questions. What's the first thing you want to pack in your getaway bag? What is an absolute must-have item for those warmer months, right? So you want to keep that in mind when you're going to pitch some of these podcasters, TV producers, radio hosts, okay? The other thing, little spoiler, okay? And normally I, I don't share this, but I will because I know that to me, everybody everybody can get on TV. It's, it's not as hard as what you think. So here is Porsche's playbook, okay? We all have news outlets that are around our states, cities, all of those things. Well, when you go on their website, they have an about me section, okay? When you go to their about me section, you will see all of their staff and talent and you can actually see. Now, not all of them have this. Some of them have their producers, other ones don't. But if they do, why not follow those producers on their social media and see the type of content that they post, see what really piques their interest, right? For example, I used to work with somebody who loved cats. Well, they always posted funny little cat videos on their Instagram, Facebook. Okay, if you're somebody who loves cats too, use that as your leverage to get in their face. Say, hey, you know, hey, um, Jessica, you know, I found this unique cat toy on PetSmart.com and I saw that you posted about it the other day and I really enjoy it. Thanks for sharing it right there builds that organic connection right there. So you're getting in this person's face and they can see, oh my God, this person is really engaging with my content. I wonder what they're up to. Bing, right there. So you see how things start to compound. You're getting in this person's face. You're engaging with them. They're engaging with you. That's when you want to start to, this leads to letter A. So we've already talked about research the show, research the topic, research the producer, all those things. Now, this leads to letter A, taking action, what I just mentioned, engaging with the host, engaging with the producer. Also, the other thing that I recommend too, when you're listening to their shows, leave comments and feedback, share, share their show on your social media. And if you're following them or if you're friends with them, tag them in and say, hey, I just listened to this amazing episode of Grew with Portia with host Portia, the producer, where she talked about X, Y, Z. And I think some of you guys can really benefit from what she had to say. Boom. It's not hard to share. It's free. You're not obligated to pay anything. So again, it gets you exposure. It gets you in that person's face. Okay. And this leads to kind of my last point, pitching. The pitch that I just mentioned, right? You are not the product. I have to say it again. You are not the product. Whether you're an author, speaker, coach, podcaster, you are not the product. You need to pitch value to these hosts and producers. They want to know what can you bring to the table that's going to help their audience. Right. And I'll be very transparent, Jessica, with my show group with Portia. I do not accept all pitches. I get pitches all the time and I read through them. I read through a lot of them. And if they don't fit a certain criteria for me, nope, I'll respond. I'll say, hey, thanks for your interest as of right now. You know, I, most of the time I tell them right now I'm currently booked for a while. But if it's somebody who I'm just like, nah. I'll tell them like, hey, thanks for your pitch. I think your your value would best suit another show. Very simply put, it's not rude. But at the same time, I have to be realistic, right? 
I'm very particular and I care about my audience and I want my audience to be 1% better than they were yesterday. So I want to have people who deliver that same value to help them in some way, shape or form. I'm somebody who believes that if you can bring something to the table that can make my life better in a day or within the same hour after I digest something, you're golden. And we all have that capability, whether you're an author, a speaker, whatever that may be, deliver the value first. We had a saying, Jessica, when I was in the newsroom called, give them the cake first, give them the cake first. Okay. I think there is unfortunately a lot of people who like to withhold information. And I feel like that does a disservice to you and the people who need your services if you're gatekeeping. So um, all that to say, you know, when you're pitching, really think and look at sample pitches, right? When you're listening to different news segments, I mean, just follow different speakers like TEDx, I think Sherry Elise. Sherry Elise is one of those people who gets on the news all the time. And look at the way that she engages. Look at the way that she interacts, right? And, you know, I have to preface this too, Jessica. Every time you pitch, you're not going to land. Okay, it's not some for some people, it works every time for other people, it takes a little bit of effort. But the more you do the research, the more return on investment you're going to get. Right. And, you know, the other thing I want to also add here, Jessica, is when you're pitching to if the producer responds to you and says, hey, thanks for your inquiry right now, we're not looking to do that segment perfectly fine, right? You've built that relationship. So circle back maybe a few months down the line. Now, here's another little cool tip that I want to share with all of you, right? Each and every one of us has a specific niche or passion that we have. Like, for example, me, I'm big on gratitude. I'm big on mental health awareness. I'm big on suicide prevention. So every single month, there's a theme, okay? So do the research on whether you're a mental wellness advocate, tie that into your pitch, right? So May is mental health month. May is also, I believe, national foster care month, I think. Something with the foster care system is in May too. And then July is minority mental health month. So if I'm reaching out to a news outlet or a podcaster who specializes or focuses on mental health, I'm going to say, hey, July is Minority Mental Wellness Month. And as of today, just hypothetically off the top of my head, the suicide rates in African-American communities have risen 15% in the last 10 years. Just hypothetically, that's not a real statistic, but I'm just using that as, as, as an example, right? And that's where you lead into, you know, hey, I would love to come on your show to talk about this point, that point, this point. You always want to keep it to the rule of three because Jessica, you know me, I'm big on the rule of three, no matter what. So you want to keep it to three points. So if I'm going to come on somebody's show and talk about mental health, number one, I'm going to say, hey, I want to talk about how people can use their mental health journey as a storytelling mechanism to help more people to care more about their mental wellness. Number two, I want to share how what you digest is how you dress, as in the things that you eat make an impact on your mental health. And number three, I want to share how through grief and gratitude, you can find growth. OK, so that's three points right there. Right. And and not all the time it's going to work. Right. As I've said before, but at least you were able to engage with that host. Right. With that producer. And keep, you know, just keep plugging along, you know, don't give up because you didn't get the first pitch. Sometimes it takes people multiple times. I'm here to tell you, as a former TV producer, TV producers get thousands of pitches a day. They do. And they don't have time to look through every single one. The bigger the news outlet, obviously, they're going to have more pro um, producers or um, what they call assignment desk editors who look through that stuff and say, oh, this is a unique pitch. This is a cool thing. So again, don't get discouraged if you don't get picked. Again, just keep working at it. Keep plugging along. Because I believe every one of us brings something valuable to the table. 
but it's all about how you deliver it and how you pitch it that will get the attention of a TV producer. I'm Portia, the producer, y'all. Any questions? Oh my God, I love this. Portia, in like 10, 12 minutes, you deliver so much content that, you know, like some people would take a whole career to um to develop like this is this knowledge to develop this knowledge this is crazy this is crazy oh my god uh I don't know what to say um I love that well what I remember um I remember many things but what made me laugh was about the cats <laughs> so it is a way to connect as well with producers right with journalists as well exactly I know back from yeah. my day in corporate I know like and I was at different companies in different industries because I was in automotive and then I was in aviation I know exactly which journalists in both industries and in the general press as well I know which ones like cats and have cats right mm -hmm. see <laughs> Just don't like my cat pictures because I've got cats as well sometimes I post about my cats right so we've been we've been let's say we've been connecting over cats for the past 10 years right doesn't matter where I was working doesn't matter where they are working maybe they also went to another publication who cares but we're still connecting over cats right so I love when you said that yes I mean and research and this is something that you do with research right you can only discover these things with research by establishing a connection with them right absolutely yeah it's you have to build that connection first. You, I mean, yeah, you can cold pitch. You can. And for some people, it works, right? And Jessica, that's another reason why for Grew With Portia, I maintain the booking calendar for that reason, because I want people who are in alignment. I do. Yeah. I'm very, and a good producer and knows that same thing. They want people who deliver the value. They can tell when somebody's just trying to get publicity, they can tell right off the bat, right? And and same with me. I can tell, like I've had people pitch me and it's funny, Jessica, I love sharing this story because this goes to show you how it, you better not mess with a good producer. A good producer is like messing with um, FBI for real because they will do their research, they'll Look at every nick and cranny of your social media. I'm here to tell you because I do it. So I had somebody pitch me last year or the year before that wanted to be a guest on my show. And this is somebody who on their social media shows that they do flipping of housing and, and things like that. But they were pitching me to be this mindset and business coach and I didn't see anything on their social media whether their Instagram Facebook YouTube I didn't see anything that depicted anything about them being this mindset and business coach yeah and so right there right there there's a discrepancy right because I don't hear anybody saying oh book a call with you know Stacey Jackson the mindset business coach or you know book you know, um, James, you know, Jones for, you know, this type of coaching. I have yet to see that on any of your platforms. And trust mm -hmm. me, I do my research. I do. I type in your name. I see what publications you've been in. I do my due diligence when people are pitching to be on my show. I do because I want people who, who are who they say they are. I don't have yeah. time for people who are trying to put up this front and pretend that there's somebody who they're not. And I kindly had to tell them, hey, you know, thanks for your inquiry. You know, I appreciate it. But as of this time, I've already covered that topic already. All right. Yeah. And and it's fair enough, right? And it's it's nothing against that person. It for one, it's me actually protecting them, right? Realistically, because you don't want to do this interview and then down the line you're like, oh, I probably shouldn't have pitched in that way when I should have pitched what I currently do and would have gained more traction that way instead of trying to pitch as a Clark Kent situation in, in, a, in a nutshell. So, Totally, absolutely. Oh, my yeah. God. So research actually goes both ways. So you've got mm -hmm. to do the research you want to pitch a producer, right? Uh, but at the same time, establish a relationship with a producer, which would be the first step, actually. And then the other way as well, like the producer is going to research you as well, 
right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if they find the pitch enticing enough, yeah, they'll be like, oh, let me let me peel back the layers on this. Let me see who this person is. And mm-hmm. I'll be honest, Jessica, I mean, you can literally Google my name, Portia Booker. You can Google it and you will see I am who I say that I am. I'm the host and face of Grew with Portia. You'll also see other articles on me that I used to be a TV producer, that I used to be a newspaper journalist, that I am an award-winning journalist. Like you'll find all that stuff on Google. You will. So I am who I say that I am. (laughs) But again, like, you know, you want to make sure that your social media depicts who you are, point blank. Yeah. And I think when it comes to TV producers, of course, like a podcast producer as well, maybe like, you know, like so many people that have their little podcast, we all have responsibility, of course, as to what we put, like the content and the people that we put in front of our audience, definitely there's mm-hmm. responsibility everywhere. But I would argue that when you are working for, a, let's say, a mainstream channel, and it could be like a mainstream yep. public or mainstream TV, TV channel, for example, then the responsibility is even higher because you are going to put this person, this brand, this, I don't know, um, company or story, like in front of maybe potentially millions of people as exactly. well, right? So it's your responsibility for the people, for the audience, responsibility actually for the person that you're putting in front of them as well, right? Like it's huge. And, and I would say that if you, I don't know, because I've never worked as a producer, you are here, you're the expert mm-hmm. here, but I would say that if you do a great job as, um, as a producer, then, uh, of co- then you are going to facilitate this instant, re- let's say, connection between the audience and the person that you're bringing in front of the audience, right? Because, like, because you're putting them on that stage, then the, the guest is going to get instant credibility, because of all of the vetting and research and that you have done, right? Exactly. I would say, right? So mm-hmm. it's a huge it's a huge power as well that you have as a producer because you can make or break a brand or a person. Totally, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, look yeah. at all of the snafus, Jessica, that have happened on the mainstream news channels, right? Because they've hosted guests that, what, months down the line have had some type of allegation put against them right? Mm-hmm. That that was already in full swing yeah. prior to the interview. Because a lot of stuff, you know, in television is pre-recorded sometimes months in advance, depending on what the show is, right? Whether it's a talk show such as, you know, like the, you know, Jennifer Hudson show or Ellen, a lot of that stuff's pre-recorded months in advance. Yeah. And sometimes those episodes come out and they're like, oh, they're scrambling, right? So now they have to rebuild their trust with you as the audience, right? Look at what happened on the Today Show, right? Mm -hmm. Look at how their whole staff is different because of the whole thing with Matt Lauer. So again, as a producer, it is a big responsibility. It is a big job. And even I'm I'm speaking to podcast hosts because a lot of podcast hosts are their own producer too, right? I, I can say that for me, I am my own producer, host, talent booker everything I do everything for Guru Portia and you know it is a big responsibility to me and, and I'll be honest with you Jessica I've had to pull some episodes of Guru Portia for that reason when I've listened back to them and I'm like oh yeah I mm-mm, let me pull this sometimes I will not air the episodes either if I pick that up because I'll, I'll be very honest I am empathic and clairvoyant so I can tell right off the bat when somebody's energy is not in alignment. I can tell. It's an energetic thing. So, you know, again, a lot of producers, I think, are very similar in my way, too. They can tell a good pitch from a bad one. They can tell when somebody is just trying to get publicity versus when somebody is trying to actually bring value. So really be care. you know, really do your, do the work. If you take anything from this live between me and Jessica, just do the work, put in the work, do the research, take the action, and then pitch. Build that relationship. I want to say the R should be relationship instead of research because build relationships are key. Like they say, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know, and it is very true. It is very true. And I can tell you in the TV world, it is about who you know, because somebody in TV can either make you or break you. 
it, it's that simple. So if you take anything from this, build those relationships, be genuine, be organic, and really be in the arena to give service and value to the people who you serve. I'm Portia, the producer, y'all. Thank you so much. Oh my God, Portia. What? This has been so good. I can't wait for the next episode next month and the end of April. Oh my God. I want to have you on the show every single week, but I know you're busy. I'm busy. Oh my God. But at least once a month, we have Portia here, guys. This is amazing. This has been Portia, the producer. Thank you so much. Enjoy your weekend, Portia. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. And we'll see you in a month. Mwah! Thank you, Portia. We love you all. I mean, we love you all at home, but we, we all <laughs> love you, Portia. Love you too, Jessica. Peace and hair, Grisha. So good.